COVID-19 vaccine is a highly effective vaccine against disease caused by SARS-CoV-2 virus and its variants. It's based on a very safe technology including the mRNA technology and it does not have the capacity to alter the DNA. It does not carry any microchips, transmitters or magnets. Till date about 2.3 billion people worldwide have been vaccinated and about 5 billion people have got their first shot at least. Um, I encourage you to get this vaccine because by this you not only protect yourself but your family and your loved ones. It's a social responsibility and it's a fast and safe way of getting out of the pandemic. I just want to say a few words about the decision that some of us need to make about getting the COVID vaccine. Vaccines have been around for 200 years when they were first used against smallpox, a disease that has caused untold suffering around the world, but has now been eradicated due to this vaccine. Another terrible virus, an enterovirus that causes polio, caused also caused a great deal of suffering, um, including uh, death and permanent paralysis in kids. And that has all been, but eliminated, but certainly on this continent, by vaccine development that occurred in the 1930s. Now we have a vaccine um, that has been proven to be safe and effective against COVID. You just have to look in the uh, current news to see uh, that during this current fourth wave, the people that are ending up in hospital and in ICUs and dying are overwhelmingly those who have not yet received their vaccine. And, and indeed, I've heard a saying that um, if you're unvaccinated, it's, it's really only a matter of time before you'll get sick, uh, given the highly uh, contagious nature of this current Delta virus that's uh, circulating. One of the concerns some people have about making the decision whether or not to get vaccinated is that this technology is new, and therefore there's some unknown side effects. Uh, while it may be true that we still don't know all the long-term uh, effects of this vaccine, um, the uh, mRNA um, has, been, has been used in patients um, for over a year and uh, uh, the technology has been around for over three decades, since 1989, and we do know some things about, uh, about this technology. Um, on the other hand, uh, if you do not get the vaccine and you end up with COVID, that itself can produce some pretty nasty long-term effects, um, including long COVID syndrome, um, which is now thought to be an autoimmune disease, uh, which gives you uh, fatigue, brain fog, decreased exercise tolerance, and uh, lots of things like that. Remember, all the great breakthrough technologies that have immensely improved uh, people's lives have at one time been new um, and unfamiliar. Um, in addition to vaccine uh, that I mentioned, um, think of insulin. This is a, a Canadian technology that was developed right here about 100 years ago. Prior to insulin, uh, diabetics had to go on starvation diets uh, just to avoid going to di diabetic ketoacidosis. Now the disease can be managed and people um, re live relatively normal lives. So like insulin, COVID vaccines are, are new, but they're already showing their high uh, efficacy against COVID. Indeed, um, this vaccine is so much more efficacious against COVID than the flu vaccine is against flu that I predict uh, mRNA technology will be used against flu and other infectious diseases and in, in fact other diseases as well um, very soon because it's so uh, economical and easy to produce. So in closing, when making the decision whether to get the vaccine, please keep in mind that the risks of, of not getting it far outweigh the risks of getting the vaccine. Specifically, uh, you're far more likely to end up in hospital, in the ICU or dying, and those risks are dramatically reduced once you're vaccinated. For you. So for your own sake and the sake of those around you, I urge you to make the right decision and get the vaccine. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the vaccine technology and uh, safety. Currently, we have vaccines for many diseases and we are enjoying our life without smallpox, without polio, um, without diphtheria and many other diseases. 
and we are very familiar with yearly flu shot. So generally, vaccines are the one of the most effective ways of uh, keeping health and preventing diseases. Generally, uh, we introduce either an attenuated uh, microorganism, usually virus, uh, or killed virus, or a part of a virus, usually protein, so that's um, more, it's older technology. For immune system to take a notice and to develop antibodies, to develop uh, T cells, which uh, will later be used to fight the actual infection and to create the memory. So once the actual virus comes along, um, then the um, immune system mounts much faster much more robust immune response and leaving a person either asymptomatic or much milder symptomatic than if they were completely naive to uh, this uh, organism. The technologies which are um, used now are slightly newer. However, they've been around in research and uh, they had been um, used at least in laboratory um, studies. DNA vaccines, um, I believe, might have been used to develop Ebola uh, vaccine. mRNA are a little bit newer. So the difference between that and uh, older technology that instead of giving our body a protein to develop immune response, we are giving sort of we're going a step ahead or step or step behind, I guess, and introducing either mRNA or messenger RNA that is in Moderna and Pfizer vaccines to allow our cells to uh, produce the protein which is then recognized by immune system. So that's a little bit uh, um, additional step. In DNA vaccines, class of a DNA's DNA is a little bit more stable than RNA. So in DNA vaccines, it's a double-stranded DNA and it's introduced in adenovirus uh, vector. The DNA then is used to in a, um, in a cell to use messenger RNA and then to produce the protein. So that's one additional step. The uh, plus side of the um, mRNA vaccine also that it's much easier to produce than a more traditional vaccine on a larger scale. So that's why we have so many vaccines uh, distributed and produced now. Are they safe? Yes, usually the first phases of vaccine trials is to understand the safety and um, I believe they had been they have been deemed safe. The studies are also ongoing and of course uh, all the data is collected. Currently there have been millions of people that were vaccinated. Majority side effects are very uh, mild. mRNA vaccines for example they only contain mRNA, um, a lipid uh, layer, and a little bit of salt uh, the stabilizer. In general, um, I wanted to say that COVID vaccines are safe and effective. If you compare, especially if you compare to um, uh, a chance of getting uh, COVID uh, disease, and if there are any questions or any um, still any doubts, I would like to refer to official sites um, such as Government of Canada sites, uh, CDC, Public Health Ontario, Canada Health for further information. Um, those sites contain excellent reference materials. They um, sometimes contain briefs of the uh, studies showing safety and uh, effectiveness of vaccine against different variants and in comparison to uh, non-vaccinated individuals.